going down in here. <laughs> Let's do this. Do you feel that? I do. <laughs> You're with your family. You're home. We're home together. And I know a lot of you are just like, whew, what is going to happen? <laughs> You're like, I. <laughs> you guys just watched Native Americans and we're pumping up. What is going on? I'm not wearing shoes. Like, let's just. I hate high heels. <laughs> I was trying to look all cute. <laughs> yeah. So there is a lot of feelings going on in here. And as you guys know, I'm not here for two days. I'm here for a movement. I'm here for us women to come together in a new conversation conversation all around just love. And I want to be really open and transparent because as you guys know who have been with me for a while, I don't serve things up with warm cookies and milk. So some of you are feeling excited and you don't really have a lot of stuff that you feel is coming up for you. You're just excited. And you're holding space for that excitement because you've done a lot of work and you're just excited. So thank you if you're in that category because you get to hold space for the rest of us. Okay? Because there's about a small percentage of you in that category. <laughs> We're all excited, but there are a lot of you that felt unworthy to come. You were afraid that since your outsides didn't match your insides and you didn't lose that extra 20 pounds and this is a fitness community, oh no, I don't want to be seen. We're in this together, who feels that? And so you wondered if you were really gonna be seen for the soul that you are or judged for the body fat on your body. Some of you feel like maybe you're too old Oh my goodness, I'm with all these young kids, they're dancing, this feels like a cheerleading party. <laughs> Ugh. I'm too old. I have nothing to offer. I thank you for showing up in your wisdom. Showing up. And some of you feel like you're too young. These gays are old. <laughs> I'm not sure what signed me up for this. And they're wild and they're old. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and thank you for showing up in your new found way of doing things because you think differently and you show up with not the same paradigms and the same belief systems that we grew up with, so thank you for being here. And this other group. You have had a story that I've had, which is, I don't need girlfriends. They stab you in the back. They'll be your friend one minute. And I actually don't really need that. I'm kind of just a good on my own. But deep down, you know 
that your wings can go a little bit farther if you feel that support underneath you. And you're deep down so afraid that if you show up in person and they don't see you, then what? Because every single person wants to be seen here. So thank you for showing up in your vulnerability. Thank you for erasing that story that you don't need sisters that you don't need women in your life, that you can do it on your own, because we're about to show you what can happen when you surround yourself with women and you will be seen. But it's gonna take you stepping into step being the victim. That's right. You saying, oh, I'm always getting hurt. I, I don't, I'm gonna let them come to me and you stepping up and being like, I'm gonna actually play something different today in these next two days, and I'm gonna say hi, and I'm gonna be really uncomfortable doing it, and I'm gonna open my heart, and I'm gonna be really uncomfortable doing it. So you might be wondering why we don't have men here. (laughs) I have nothing against men, nothing against men. And actually, someone came to me and they said, well, what about people that identify as a female? They're welcome. It wasn't about that. It wasn't about that. And some of you brought your men, and they're in the hotel room, and man, I feel bad for them when you go back to your hotel room, because you're going to be processing, and they're like, let's snuggle, and you're like, I cannot snuggle right now. (laughs) They've been waiting at the spa, taking a tour of Denver, and you're like, I just processed a lot of stuff. But to make things funny, play the video of why we have no vet men. In all seriousness, <laughs> it's just time. We've all felt this more than ever right now. Women are coming together more than ever. They're coming together in rallies. They're coming together in sisterhood. I mean, I go out and I see women together having dinner all the time. Like, I see it more than ever. Have you guys felt that? And it's, but there still feels, to me, this currency going on almost of let's come together in our pain, let's come together in our anger, let's come together in our frustration. And I feel like it's time that we come together in forgiveness. We come together in celebration. We come together in this remembrance of who we are, this DNA cellular remembrance of all the ancestors that have come before us and really coming together and wiping out that idea of separation that I'm different from man, or I'm different from someone who has hurt me, or I'm different from someone who believes different than me. And we decide that we're gonna actually come together and erase that separation, and just truly start to see each other on a soul level. Do you guys feel that? Do you feel that it's time? This new conversation of saying that it's time for me to step into my radical self-love. So I want to take a minute and really explain what this rise is all about and what's going to go down in these next two days and not just these next two days, but hopefully for the rest of your life because we truly know the work happens every single day. These two days is just about remembering, just like remembering and pulling out that little girl inside of you. So when I look at the rise logo, It has, you know, the downward triangle, and then you have stairways up. Because to truly rise, you've got to go within. And a lot of us feel this call to do something great in life, 
global warming. We want to help out orphanages. We want to do so much. We want to help with plastic and things that we find destructive in the world, war. And something that's really calling to me, and I have a feeling it's calling to all of you, is that the greatest work we can actually do for the planet, the greatest work we can do in this life, is loving ourselves more. Because when you step into more self-love, it changes everything. It changes how you interact. It changes what you purchase, how you eat, how you affect the planet, what you do to the planet. It changes how you see other people, whether they believe the way you believe or not. So my mission and my hope is that each person in here can step into more self-love. Because yes, you're gonna connect with other people and yes, that's my goal to have you connect and to feel that support. But my biggest goal and my biggest intention is that you connect with yourself. Because I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna have friends that leave you. You will have family that leave you. There will be people that betray you. And you get to step into more love for yourself because you never get to leave yourself. And I know that if you take on that, and if we take on this together, this many thousand plus women together in this room, we are changing the vibration. We give permission for our children to love themselves more. We give permission for communities to love themselves more because when you show up in that, it shines light for another human being to do the same. So are you ready? Are you ready to rise up into your own self-love? And we talk about self-love and we can go, God, it's just, there's, that just seems so deep and hard. I don't even know what that is. Well, in the next two days, I'm gonna show you exactly what I've done and what I have to continue to do because I'm telling you, you never arrive. The rise doesn't mean you've ever arrived. It doesn't even mean you have to start somewhere because that word, the rise, just means I just rise where I'm at today and I've never arrived and I'm just continually growing and there's no like hierarchy. There's not someone who's higher up and you're lower. It's just I'm rising, that's all. And if we can just own our own rise and own our own self-love, we are going to change the planet. And I want to do it with you guys. I want to ask you guys some questions. And before I ask you these questions, I want you guys to trust the process of what I've created because I've seen all of you in my dreams and in my manifestations and my meditations. I've seen you, I felt you. And I know this is not just my mission. This is each one of your missions. This is your movement. This is your dream, your passion, because you wouldn't be here if it wasn't. And so we're just doing this together. I just created the space, but now you get to do it and create it wherever you're at in the world. And it really just starts with you. That's all you have to worry about because a lot of times we step into these ideas. So this is my question. Can you let go of judgment for just two days? And this judgment is judgment of others and more importantly, judgment for yourself. You see, when you go to grow, the mind is super tricky. And, and I've been studying the mind for the past five years. I'm fascinated and it's actually it's what accelerated everything for me is studying the mind. It's what's created what you guys look at my life and think, oh, she's got it so abundantly. It's because I've really understood the power of the mind. And so when you go to grow and you start to break these glass ceilings, which are all an illusion, your ego is trying to keep you small. So this is how it shows up. Why did she have those speakers? I didn't like what she said. And, they, and this is another thing. I use this word humanism. It doesn't mean anything other than humans, but people will take it and spin it into some weird term. That's form of judgment. That's you trying to keep in your way of growing, of just for, forming some judgment to keep you from feeling for staying safe. So you will go, you'll start to question, oh, why'd they say that? Or why did she do that? Because maybe you're meant to be on this stage. Maybe you're meant to put on an event and you're not doing it, so you gotta judge it. 
You see, I was a master judger. I judged everything because I wasn't stepping into it. So look at your judgment because that's your opportunity. That means that that whatever you're judging either lives in you or it's something you want to step into and you're too afraid to do it. And then judging yourself. Really looking at what are these stories and just looking at them because two days ago I had massive unworthiness creeping up. Wondering, comparison. I'm like, okay, I know what this is. Just recognizing it and knowing it's part of all of it. And you just get to recognize, you don't judge yourself for it. Oh my gosh, I'm judging myself. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Just let it, let it know that you're not alone. And that's just the first step. So can we work on that for the next two days? Judgment. The next one, are you willing to try new things? New ways of thinking. Samantha, I'm going to kind of embarrass you. <laughs> I, didn't, I forgot to tell you I was going to say this. So Samantha walks out of her bedroom every morning. You know how we walk out of our bedrooms and it's like a 20-minute ordeal just to kind of wake up, right? And just kind of get our bearings. Samantha, she wakes up, she comes out, and she's like, I would like eggs, toast, and hot chocolate. And she says this every morning, and she's like, it's first thing out of her mouth, and she wants it every single morning. I'm like, do you want to try a smoothie or oatmeal? No, she wants eggs, toast, and hot chocolate, which is cacao bliss. <laughs> a lot of you are doing the same thing. I want this, this, and this. And this is what I like. When you don't even know there's this amazing acai bowl over here that you could be devouring. You don't know about maybe even not eating and seeing how that feels. You see, we're really programmed. We're programmed from an early age. And some of it works for you. Some of it is your, what you feel is true for you. And a lot of it's not. So I challenge you these next two days to really take on a new way of thinking, a new way of being. So if you tend to be the talker, maybe listen more. If you tend to be the person who's like, I'm going to wait till someone says hi to me, you go say hi to someone else. If you're the person who's like, I don't know how to shake it, and I hate jumping and this whole cheerleader thing, <laughs> be the one who moves and see how that feels. This is like a playing ground for you. You signed up for a playing ground to try out a new, try, just try. Say, order something different, try a different conversation, try to be who you are. No one knows who you are. Just be what you feel you want to try out. You, know, you can go home and be like, that didn't work for me. I didn't like that. I don't like moving my hips. <laughs> try it out. The other one. So we all raise our hand. We're willing to try new things. Yeah? Some of you are like, I don't raise my hand. <laughs> Danette's a little too excited. <laughs> so you should really raise your hand. <laughs> and this was one of my favorites, because this is something I've been working on a lot in my journey. Loving all of your dimensions. Because truthfully, like you put on a certain outfit and you sit and you act and behave a certain way. But we all know this really conservative is like a freak inside. <laughs> <laughs> and we know that this person that seems really confident is really, really f scared and doesn't feel seen. And we know the person who seems so happy has actually some of the darkest days. And the person who seems super connected to everyone, like celebrity, feels alone a lot. So can you love yourself in all of your dimensions? Love yourself in your wild, your soft, you're humble, you're not humble, in your loudness, in your brightness, and in your dark days, can you love yourself in all of it? Because that is the step 
to self-love. Because it's easy to love yourself when everything seems to be going great. And then the next day or even 30 minutes later, you're like, oh my gosh, I just feel all this like icky. Love yourself in it. Be like, and I love that. Can we just say that? And I love that. <laughs> I feel so ugly today. And I love that. <laughs> Try it on. I feel really afraid to do this. And I love that. Really try that on. Powerful. And so there's, okay, I have a little confession. <laughs> Me and my husband at night watch the Golden Girls. <laughs> we love the Golden Girls, and the Golden Girls plays nonstop at night because the Golden Girls are all of us. It's such a popular show because every character in the Golden Girls is all the dimensions. Do you see that? And actually, you are every single golden girl. So put up Dorothy. She's ornery, very stern, very masculine. Tells you what it's like. Well, not what it's like, what you don't want to hear. And we love her for it. And we love her for it. We love her character. And Dorothy lives in each one of you. A lot of you tell it how it is. A lot of you are a little ornery. Then there's Blanche, who's the slut. <laughs> she's got a new man every show, and she's just in her silky PJs, and she's who she is. And we love her for that. And they each love each other for it. And they're so radically different, but they love each other in it. And so she lives inside of each one of you. And then, Go to Sophia. <laughs> She's the old crockety like, woman who's just mean, but we love her because she's funny and she's old and she can say whatever she wants because she's old and I can't wait till I'm at that age. I'm gonna get away with a lot. And she lives in all of us because she's actually really wise at the same time. And she loves fiercely, and we see beyond that. We see beyond her words. We see beyond the persona she tries to put out, that she loves each one of those women so much. And then there's Rose. And Rose is innocent. And maybe even they think she's kind of dumb. And Rose lives in all of us. We all have innocence. We're all innocent. And we're all a little dumb. <laughs> and we all have a lot of stories. And so I challenge you to try on all your dimensions, love all your dimensions, and know that you're not alone in all of your dimensions. Can we love ourselves in all our dimensions? And now the last one. Can we be willing to be vulnerable. I have vulnerability hangover pretty much every day. I will go out to eat with certain people and feel like I said too much or didn't say enough. How did I express myself? Do you guys do this or am I alone? Like you go in bed and you're like role playing the night and you're like, how did I sound? Did I uh, say too much? And you just have this anxiety. I don't know why I have it, but I've learned to love myself in it. And so it's really got me on this mission of how vulnerable am I willing to get because I've noticed that the more I step into my, more, my vulnerability, it's a direct correlation into more self-love. Have you noticed that? And some of you haven't really dabbled in it because you still are hiding behind your stories. You're still hiding behind this idea that I have to show this to be approved and seen and accepted. And we're terrified of not being accepted. It's in our DNA, we're tribal people. That's why I bring on these Native American people and I'm gonna make you move up and down and do wild things and you're gonna be like, what is Danette doing? This is like, like a kind of a drug experience that Danette's gonna take us through. Because I'm trying to stir up your vulnerability because I am so committed to your self-love. Because I know when you step into that self-love, it changes all of your decisions. 
which ultimately changes the planet. Are you willing to play full out? Yeah? Play full out? All of you have a little girl in you. You are that little girl before you got shamed, before you felt like maybe that dream didn't matter. So I want to ask, are you willing to play full out with that inner child? This, this is my big question for you before vulnerability. I want you to play the video of the little girl because I want you to really think about that little girl inside of you. So are we willing to play full out and let her out? She's dying to come out. Some of you have let her out. She's coming wanting to come out more. So now we're gonna step into this vulnerability question. What is that one thing you don't want anyone to know about you? Because I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not even here to motivate you. I'm here to transform you. I did not spend a year planning this event to not have you walk away thinking differently, feeling differently, and stepping into a new way. So what is that one thing that you don't want anyone to know? And I want you to grab your journals really quick, and I want you to write down the one thing you're going to try on for these next two days. And there might be more than one, but if it's only one, that's awesome. So just take a minute and write down, what is that one thing you're going to try on? Another way of phrasing that would be, what is the one thing I'm going to intend? What's my intention? What is my intention? And you guys all know if you watched any of the videos, <laughs> the intention is the biggest thing you could have brought here. Not your nice outfit, not your curling iron, not your parka, your intention. All right, I want to shake up some energy because a lot of you were feeling a lot of things. For me, nature's everything, but our bodies can replicate that, and that is through movement. That's through shaking it up, and this is all scientifically proven. So I want to take a minute, put down your journals. I want you to stand up, shake it out, feel the music. If you're not a booty shaker, booty shake it. Let's shake it out.